Welcome back and good morning everybody from New Zealand, deep up in the mountains. We've just had our coffee, we've had our breakfast. Get out here, first thing, Todd spots a bull tar up on top of the mountains. I mean, literally, we're sitting next to hot spring pools. We've got this amazing cabin behind us where people stay and then we step outside and there's tar like all around us. We've found two bull tar and a chamois so far. So right now we're getting out the spotting scopes, kind of getting to see the movements, see if this this is a, a tar or chamois that we can go after or if it's just uh, no go. I mean, if you look where it is, um, I know I can't get up there. So it's one thing to find them. It's another thing to find actual huntable tar that you can approach. Now for my buddy, JT, who is a hardcore bow hunter, that adds a totally different element uh, to try to get to those things and get a shot on them with a bow. So if he cannot get within bow range, I'm gonna take the rifle and I'm gonna take the shot. He's got a huge challenge ahead of him, but good news is we've already, we're already seeing animals right off the bat, y'all. Yesterday, the hardest physical thing I've ever done. We slept like a rock, and today, just to get up and have this excitement, feels good, man. So, let's go get it done. So, uh, gonna head across the river now. We've seen about half a dozen tar up here. Gonna kind of work our way up the creek and see if they move down to a little bit better shooting position there. And some pretty rough stuff right now, so, uh, yeah, we'll see what, uh, see what the day brings. Crossing another mountain sway bridge. I promise you the color of this water is not photoshopped. It actually is blue. What do you think, JT? Well, I think these mountains are crazy steep. And it's freaking awesome that we've already seen some tar from the camp. Right up here is where we had one bull tar that was kind of in a position that we could get to, so I was just glassing up here making sure he wasn't still there. Like most sheep hunts, this is a lot of glassing. Just sitting here and looking at these rock ledges. We've already seen five or six tar, but we can't get to them where they are. It's insane where they're living. So right now is the rut over here. The males right now are a little bit different coloring, so they stand out a little bit better. The thing about this area that we're in though, what Todd is saying, like all these tar bull size. So if there's really no question that like when you see one, it's a definite shooter bull. I'm gonna shoot anything that I see. And over here, there's no restrictions, regulations. You could shoot 100 tar in a day, any size if you want to. Obviously, I just want one. And it's been a hell of a challenge getting up here. So just savor the opportunity to see one and get the shot at one. So the tar are way up there. We've been glassing down uh, by the river for a little bit. And uh, Todd's thinking the best thing to do is just get to where they might come out get in the best position where there's like two or three little avalanche uh, washout areas where they'll step out and then we could shoot from, you know, anywhere from, I don't know, hopefully close for JT. Yeah, like 60 yards and in. 60 yards and in? That's what but we want. It, it very well could be like 500 yards. We just don't know. We don't know where they're going to come out. So, it's time to strap up, get your gators on and get to rock stepping all the way up there. This one's pretty movable. Okay. Straight hoofing it right here.
Hit of a bit of a snag here. We got some really huge rocks now. They're getting harder to crawl up on. So some of them are just like straight walls. So we got bigger pools up here. We're about 2,000 feet of elevation right now. It's not really hard on the lungs, it's just hard on the muscles. And yeah, just like making sure you have good foot placement before you go on to the next rock. Woo! This is insane. Look at that snow across the way. Way up there. Yikes. That is a sketchy one there. Ooh. I'm thinking about going up. No, I can't. You opened up a hole right here. There was not very much water coming out of here, and now it's like gushing out. Good. You drain this one. Drain the pool. Yeah. I'm jumping, partner. Like a billy goat. Yeah. That big rock right up there. That's where we're going. We can see all around so we just got to get beyond this pool and then uh that's where we're going to be hunting right there i think we're going to have to go up under this huge rock here oh. That's a big freaking rock. Good thing there's no jaguars in New Zealand. Ugh. Use this and hook it around that tree you're holding on. Ugh. Last stretch right here. Treacherous. We're going straight up the waterfall and then we'll be at our spot up there where we can start glassing. This has been about three hours going straight up right here just to get to this spot. It's real. It's pretty real, buddy. What'd you drop? Yeah, but it wasn't hanging very good, or it wasn't stuck very good. You need to, yeah. Todd, we gonna be able to go up that way? Yeah. You have a good footing. Yeah. I'm probably gonna have to hand you this bow. Oh God. Grab that. Pass it on up to the top. Oh, my shoes are not gripping very good right now. Pretty wet right here, so I'll use your axe to get on this side. Oh, that way, JT. Huh? We'll just get out of the way of the waterfall. Okay. That's slick as <laughs> right there. Dude, we ain't gonna be able to go this way. Ah, oh, lad! Yeah, we may be sleeping up here tonight. You almost got it. Ripped your shirt. Yeah. That was rough, y'all. Great thing about New Zealand, though, there's water. 
everywhere, drinkable. I forgot my my uh, canteen today, so I'm just gonna get me some of this water right here. This is a lot of work for a goat. Mad respect to all goat hunters right now. Uh. What's the word, Toddy? Yep, that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> Hoping to find a route that we don't fall. Now maybe you find the way down. Definitely the race the other side. Huh? The other way. We might down. We go down the other side. I think we we're in the right vicinity, like where we were in the trees there. Maybe we just had to go in a little more. Wow. There's literally tar poop right here. You can smell. Tar literally get up on top of here. You can smell the must. Finally made it on top of our rock where we're glassing now. So we can actually see the hut all the way down behind us. It's taken us probably like three to four hours to get up here. Where we originally saw this tar this morning is probably about 600 yards. But now we're sitting on like this perfect rock where we can see tar coming from multiple directions. And we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna glass until we see something. The mist has moved in, y'all. We're literally in the clouds, but we're above the clouds, which is, it is a strange feeling. I can start to feel the mist, put the jacket on. Look at this. It's just a little strange to look up, and then you see a mountain in the clouds. Anyways, we're hoping this is going to give uh, the tar and possibly the chamois too uh, a little bit of a false sense of security. That evening's coming closer, they're going to step off the mountain a little bit and give us a chance. We've worked so hard to get up here. It feels like, it feels like heaven is meeting earth right here. It's so weird. We just need to get him to stand up. Yeah. Hold on a second with me. You, can you hold it pretty steady? Yeah. <clears throat> you can kill him whenever. I got it recording. You do? Yep. And I've got it all perfect. It's this, not gonna work. Is this scope? Stand up. This, I'm not gonna work right here. 
I don't reckon oh, it might work. We could get my spotting scope and phone scope set up here. Well, no, he's saying that the blast will shake this. This close to getting the shanty. This fog just rolled in at a terrible time before the chamois was going to stand up. So we know that there's other animals up there. Shammy kept looking back. We're going to try to get up there and maybe make a stock so JT can get one with his bow. And uh, maybe we'll see some other animals up there when we get up there. It's mountain hunt, man. Conditions changing all the time. So we're going to head over to this big rock. See if we can get on some other animal. Oh yeah, I see him. I was looking past him. Oh, he's right there. Tough, tough, tough. We spotted two more chamois. They were up on top of a ridge. Just trying to get the camera out. Get over there fast enough. As soon as we started to even touch the rifle, we started walking away. We don't have enough time to stay up here. The fog has gotten too thick. We know there's animals all up here, but we can't. We can't hunt for them. It's time to go all the way back down to those rocks and creeks and everything. And I guess we're gonna have to come back here later. I think tomorrow is just gonna be rain, so we're not even gonna be able to hunt. It's just. We saw a couple of animals at least, and there's signs of them, but it's not going to happen today. Huge learning lessons on day one. We had to come down the mountain in the dark and we had to even use our headlamps just to get back. The sun has been going out about 6.30 and adding in the overcast, the mountains, you really have to wrap your hunt up uh, earlier in order to get down. It took us over an hour and a half to get down. It took us about three hours to get up and just crawling through all those rocks and the, the river, it was just a challenge. The physical aspect of hunting these goats is crazy. Like I trained, I got in shape for this hunt, my legs are still killing me. But the great news is my back feels great, my head feels good, all of that's good. It's just, you gotta make sure you're stepping in the right spot. And if you're going downhill, make sure that that rock doesn't have any slick spots to it or it's not gonna move because one wrong step and a, a rock could roll over on your ankle and then you're really screwed. But what we learned yesterday is a great spot where those tar and chamois are coming out about 2,000 feet up the mountain. The top of the mountain is about 8,000. That's where you're seeing the snow and it's, it's really nasty up there. Definitely not going in that direction. The highest we'll probably go is maybe 35. The little grazing areas that have some grass to it, uh, the little pathways, you can, it's easier to spot when you're looking at a broad picture of it and then kind of mark that, keep a mental note of that and then trek up there. We saw two chamois, but we weren't able to get a good shot. What I learned was this is a lot like bow hunting, even though I'm gonna be hunting with a rifle with Todd's rifle that I'm hunting with, similar to the one I have back home that has a dial out scope on it, the Leopold scope, and it's super accurate, but if you know the distance, you can dial to 150, 300, all the way out to 600 yards and shoot really effectively. You just have to know that distance beforehand and be able to dial real quick and then squeeze a shot off. So in that aspect, it's a lot like bow hunting. It's so hard to hunt these goats from below. It's much easier to get on top of them, but in order to do that, you have to sneak sneak above them when they're not looking and it's just a big challenge. Y'all, the weather is in charge of the program out here. If it wasn't for Todd, his knowledge of hunting up here for so many years and just knowing the weather and how it's looking, how it's coming, and then having those Garmin devices, giving us the forecast uh, where we can have a, a good idea of what's going on, uh, it'd be extremely tough. And this is why I had to get so much gear, like get the rain gear, get the puffies, get the, you know, uh, all the warm stuff 
because it is miserable conditions, just cold and wet the whole time. We're extremely blessed right now to be able to stay in this this hut, this cabin. There's no electricity. Um, there's one little room that has uh, water and a shower, and we're able to, to heat stuff up with a coal stove. Just to be able to get inside, warm those coals up, dry your boots out, dry your gear out, that is nice because from here on out, me and Todd, we're gonna go by ourselves, JT's gonna go by himself, and we're gonna spike out, which means basically we're taking our, everything on our back, taking our tents, and we're sleeping on, on top of the mountain because in order to have those prime time moments where, you know, right as the sun comes up and they're moving around, just like whitetail back at home, right in the evening, you gotta have some time to get in position, especially if we wanna get on top of them, get above them, and really get a good opportunity to see them. We gotta stay on top of the mountain. Over your left, we're splitting up. That's where we started today. It's right down at that river basin. Toss spotted. Spotted a tar? Thank you.